Houston City Beat is brought to you in part by Vito's Chill and Grill. Cater your next event at Vito'sChillandGrill.com. Cepeda, how are you today? Hello, Liz. Glad to be here. Yeah. Hello, Mike. Thank you so much for coming out here and uh, doing this interview with us. I have so many questions to ask you. I don't know if I'm your biggest fan, but I'm one of your biggest <laughs> fans here in Houston. And uh, Thank you. I, I had a, a great opportunity to go out and see your Valentine's concert. Mike and I went and attended uh, this last year, and it was absolutely magical. And I have some Thank questions you. to ask you about that. Thank you. So happy to be here and yeah. to share with all the members of Houston City Beat. Perfect, perfect. So my first question is, I know your your music is all about jazz, right? How did you how did you fall in love with jazz? What was it about jazz that that just turned you on, lit your fire, and how did you go down this music career? Well, I started listening to jazz when I was little, and uh, several influences came out to to bring me to this place. First, uh, I had a a cousin that was a jazz pianist, and uh, but also I was exposed to this music early on through the radio in Venezuela, believe it or not. And um, my f the first person that actually caught my attention was Ella Fitzgerald. And uh, of course, her voice is magical, is beautiful. Something about the rhythm was just s magnetic to me. And later on, um, um, one of my brothers gave me uh, music by... Um, uh, other jazz artists that really sparkled my my love and my my desire to to continue listening to to that music and I, I think you were born for this what you do you were born for it and to see Raquel on stage you'll definitely understand what I'm talking about when I say she was born to to sing and share jazz because you're absolutely natural at it thank you and it's, it's beautiful thank to you. see you out there on stage Your future with me cause you see Um, so walk us through a day. I know that you do write your own music, correct? Yeah. Walk us through a day of when you sit down and you say, today is a day I'm going to compose something new. I'm going to write new music, new lyrics. Walk us through a day of that. Well, most of the time writing a song doesn't happen as, okay, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to write a song. It has happened before. Like mm -hmm. some people have told me, well, uh, we have this event, it is very special, and uh, we need nice music for this. And I'm looking through music all around, you know, the internet that could support what they want, and I'm not finding anything else, and I'm like, okay, I need to write something myself for that. Okay, fine. Um, that, that has happened, you know, a few times, but um, most of the times is... Um, it comes as an inspiration. It comes as, you know, I may be washing dishes or walking or driving. It has happened while I'm driving too. Yeah. And all of a sudden I just get this, this music in my head and, or, or this lyrics in my head and I just have to document it immediately. So what I do is that I grab my phone, I record that melody and uh, or I write it down as a as a as a note, and then I have like a like a library of uh, material collected that when I am sitting in front of the computer and I don't have any anything crazy to catch up with, and I'm in the right set of mind, I'm like, okay, let me just review those ideas mm -hmm. and see how can I develop them, and that's how I I end up then bringing them to the next stage, which is kind of like putting both music and lyrics and paper, um, and then rehearsing them and then bringing them to a show. So tell us about your band. I know you mentioned that it took you a while to bring the band together. 
Y'all have been together since 2017, your current band? Yes, yes. Um, and I am so blessed and so happy to have been working with them for this time. Um, yeah, it, it came as a... Um, as as the need to conform a, a group that could really bring about the Latin rhythms, the Latin flavors with the root of jazz, mm -hmm. which was the most important thing. Now, you have to understand Houston has a lot of fantastic talent and uh, musicians from all over the world and especially from South America. Now, um, you know, it's, it's difficult sometimes to find the right the right, the right grounding of, you know, having all that experience in Latin music versus having all that experience in jazz. And uh, it took me a while. I went to see different concerts, uh, different musicians, until I found the right people. And also through working, I was doing a jazz series at the time, and I was bringing different musicians to play with me. And I could really kind of feel where they were in, in terms of those aspects that I was looking for. So your Valentine's Jazz on Valentine's is described as a musical aphrodisiac for mind, body, and soul. Okay. And I really do believe this. Being there, witnessing it, Mike and I went to your concert, and I really felt all of that. How do you, how do you prepare for this concert? Because you have to be in a certain mood as you get on stage to be able to provide that energy to your audience. How does that... How do you prepare for a concert like that? Because Valentine's Day is a very important day. You know, is is a day where you want to celebrate love with with your with your couple. You want to um, make them feel special. You want to um, rate their existence. But love, you know, how do you how do you put love into into a package how do you love is something really transcendental it's not just a, 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 a can of chocolates it's not just um, you know is, is something so transcendental and so meaningful and I have to be very careful that I, I really treat it and approach it that way otherwise it becomes just another commercial thing you know mm -hmm. And um, when I'm preparing for Valentine's, I really, really, really have to dig deep into what the meaning of love is. And, um, and, and that brings me into my own spiritual um, depths of, of, you know, how do I transmit this to the others? What it is love? And how do I transmit it to other people? So that that day, is not just another concert. Mm -hmm. It's something that feeds the minds and the souls of the people that are attending. You have your own personal love story. You're married. You look very happy. And uh, I know y'all just went on a trip to Brazil. Yeah. Um, I follow her on social media, so I know all about her. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about uh, tell us about your love story. How did you meet? Um, how long were y'all dating? When did, where did you get married? Well, you know, it's it's part of being human. You know, you sometimes uh, go through life without really focusing on on what's important, and uh, you put your your compass sometimes in, in, in directions that are not the right directions. You start looking for the wrong attributes in a person, in a, in a person that you're gonna spend your life with. Uh, and at the same time, we're so immersed in this uh, world where everything is just pointing to, to things that are not real, that are not essential, that are not meaningful. Mm -hmm. So before meeting Hilton, so that I can summarize all this so before I met Helton I was married um, and uh, and then I got divorced in 2009 and then uh, I dated for seven years uh, you know 
with different people. But it was a disaster, really. <laughs> it was a disaster. Um, and uh, it came a point where I had to say, you know what? Something's wrong here. And it's not the rest of the world. It's me. Mm-hmm. I have to figure out what's One wrong with me. denominator. That's <laughs> <laughs> a common denominator. And... Um, and I had to, you know, do a lot of writing because some, something about writing uh, really helps you put things in paper and, and really, like, see them from, a, from, from, from above, literally. Two months later, I was singing and uh, Helton was in the audience and uh, uh, he came back the next time, the next mm-hmm. performance by himself with the intention of getting to know me. And... Um, and, you know, at that point, I was like, okay, let's see what happens. Of course, it was super cute and <laughs> everything. And um, we started going out. But the difference this time is that I went with a, uh, um, uh, an idea of what is it that I, that I was allowing in my, in my life to, to be, who I was allowing in my life to be. So th- that process with him, it was... I w- it was very slow in, in, in terms of um, our physical involvement at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Of course, we were going out all the time and everything, but um, I allowed myself to, to give time to get to know him and what was he about uh, before anything further happened. And um, uh, it's interesting, but I start checking, I start checking out all the boxes with him. I was like, oh, this is strange. And he even invited me to go to Brazil to meet his family, even, you know, at, with a month and a half of mm-hmm. having known each other. It was, it was incredible. I mean, in, in three months, uh, we knew that we wanted to be together and we married yeah. right away. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. So that's my story with yeah. Helton. And uh, it, even though it was only three months, uh, because I went with that, you know, uh, filtering criteria, mm-hmm. um, no, it, it's not that I manifested anything or anything like that. Maybe I think it was just God that that mm-hmm. was behind all this. Um, I I think that I was able to see the right things in him and and fall in love with the right things. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. It sounds like your reticular activating system was turned on, and that's why you saw him, and that's how it happened so fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's great. So I have a series of questions, like quick fire questions. Okay. okay? So I'm going to ask him, and you answer them as fast as you can. Okay. So uh, do you sing in the shower? Yes. Do you sing in the car? Yes. Do you sing your own music in the shower or in your car? No. You don't? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever thought about singing your own music in your shower or in your car? Only if I have to rehearse it for a show and it has a different arrangement. Okay, so does Helton sing in front of you? No. No? Well, no, yes, sometimes. Okay. <laughs> uh, do you have, I know you have an upcoming concert coming up in December of 2023. Yes, December 10th. Yes, yes, yes. So the Christmas concert, now it's it's becoming an annual um, must. And I would like to invite you all to get your calendars ready, put it down. Right now, save the date, December 10th at the Match Theater. Uh, it's going to be a Christmas concert. Okay, okay. Perfect. With a septet. And if I had to guess, I would say you're probably going to wear red. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe I'll surprise you. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Raquel. No, it thank was you. Amazing Liz. having you come here and answer all of my crazy questions. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I was I was super super candid with you all. Um, these are the untold stories yeah. of of my journey. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, and uh, let's let's do this again sometime soon. Of course. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. you.